we want to give because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the first fruit of the resurrection. Even God believed in the first fruit. I don't want people to give because somebody is manipulating them to give. If you do that, you are not investing in the kingdom. Because everything that concerns the kingdom is done through faith and love. I say what? One, because you love God. Two, because you trust him. If you love him, then you will trust him. I'm trusting God that he gave me this. I love him that I want his work to go on. But I don't believe I don't know whether I will change my mind. That the church should go out, print envelope, and be begging unbelievers to take care of the house of God. Whatever vision God gives to any church, he put kingdom sponsors in it. Even if they are not there and you reach poor people, he gives them power to make the wealth to do what he, God, have given to that system. So whatever God wants us to do, the money is in your pocket. It's in your bank account. So, I know somebody's better, don't Father, I'm praying. Don't let, don't speak that we should do something very big. So we are coming, and I want you to come with love, with joy, with trust. When you are giving to God, you are not losing, you are investing into eternity. How many of you invest and cry? A high yielding uh, investment you put and you know you calculate your children's school fees, everything, future school fees is in, on it, in it. Look at it. By five years, I'll be a millionaire. All things being equal, but on F here, <laughs> nothing becomes equal unless you pray. And your hope, you sow in tears, but you reap. Whatever you are today is what you sowed yesterday. Oh. If you have a degree, it's because yesterday you want to invest it. Or, or you studied. You can also decide to sleep throughout your life. And you'll come out with nothing. Oh. So if you want to see a better tomorrow, you need to start sowing for tomorrow today. So that when harvest times come, you can go and reap. People won't reap when they have not. Oh. When you see people doing, getting some things and becoming, buying cars without trouble, without having any, uh, some people can just 
buy a car like like water, ice water. I'm not saying walking to a home second hand. Walk to tear rubber. <laughs> Look at it. Look at the best. This one, no, no, no. Then say, oh, which one has the 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 latest? They said this one. So this one. Uh, just sign a check or transfer this and fill the forms. Drive it out. It's not that he's a magician. He sold and sold and sold. Now he had more than enough so he can walk there. So whatever we are sowing today, don't think it's gone, it's going waste. You can sow love. If you sow love, you receive love in return. Some of you Pastor, the church doesn't care. Anytime I see some, somebody tell the church doesn't care, I know she doesn't or he doesn't care. Because if you cared for somebody, somebody will also care for you. If you don't attend people's mother's funeral <laughs> or people's father's funeral, who do you want to come to your father's one? You are always busy for people's, when it comes to people's things. You think people are not busy in life. So if you want people to attend your funeral, your, your, your funeral go to people's funeral. But that is only it's not the eternal term, but for people to know that we still won't grow. We used to have people. Whatever you want, if you want to be loved, love people. If you start fighting everybody in the church, they, everybody in the church will become your enemy. You know that? So today, we are going to give our first fruit. Whether you like the person on your left or right. Sometimes, unfortunately, you come and sit down, you look at your left. The one that sits there, she. And God put you there. So all the time the pastor is preaching, he looks at different direction. He said, ten and do what? Say something to him. He will never turn to one side. <laughs> turn to the other side. So we're going to give our first fruit. I want you to rejoice. I want you to dance. The Bible says he gives us what? The power to make what? It simply means he gives you the ability to be able to become rich comes from God. So we want to involve God in our life. Say, give, honor the Lord with what? Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with what? Say first fruit. Of what? Of what? You don't select some portion and give the first fruit. It means all, every area you make profit. You don't also take loan to come and give it as first fruit. Did you hear what I say? Yes. Because the first fruit is not an increase. It's a borrowed money. The, the, the loan is a borrowed money. You repay it. 
if we invest the loan and there's a profit on it, you pay the first fruit on the profit. Because that is yours. I hope you are getting me. Yes. I don't want you to operate something that God is not asking you to operate. I want things that will benefit you and that will bear fruit, not because we want money. So I pump all of you. Go and, go and get, you see, whatever it is, even if you don't get this, this in force and get money and come and give. No, 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 no. You give what God has blessed you with. If God did not bless you, tell him God you didn't bless me. So what you say like how Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But if you have, <laughs> and you say silver and gold have I none, the rest will vanish. You say you, are, you say you don't have. So, <laughs> I want us to do it with joy and rejoicing. Amen. Amen. So, we take a song. My life, my beloved, if it belongs to him, then your money always belongs to him.
Jesus. I love you. A sweet, sweet Jesus. I love you. Oh, yes. Oh. Sweet, sweet Jesus. Sweet, sweet Jesus. even the nails because you had the power to come down but you laid down your life because you love us Jesus we express our gratitude what we are giving is nothing to be compared to what you give to us you laid your life down for us you went through all that for us because you love us. We are also giving Lord out of love. May you open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings unto us in such a way that we will have no room to hold and to contain our blessings. Our gracious Father, we say thank you because you give us power to prosper. May you open our eyes to doors, to avenues. Lord, grant our favor first before you and second before men. That whatsoever takes favor, we will be the first in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let's take some. Uh, don't you love Jesus? Is it praise, worship, they are all gifts. They are all what we can give to him. So that you may have nothing but the fruit of your lips. You can get, give the fruit of your lips, which is your praise. 
just open your mouth and say, God, thank you. Don't think about what left your pocket. Think about God giving you the health and the strength. Sometimes the irony of life is that when you are young, you say the day I'll become rich like my father. I want to eat all the meat, drink all the milk, take all the sugar things. And the day you get the money, they tell you not to eat them. <laughs> but I think God wants to bless us to enjoy whatever he blesses us with. Amen. So he'll give us some.
that our God reign show. We celebrated his reigning power over death last week. What every man fear on earth here is death. And he came and reigned over death. We have some song. It's a few songs. Even, no, it's not a song. Even in the grave, it is long. For the golden captain, even in the grave, he is long.
is everywhere. His lordship is not only in heaven. It's not only on earth here. But under even where death dwells. That is why his name nothing can resist it. When that name is mentioned heaven and the heavenish will have to stand. On earth here everything have to bow underneath there everything have to bow so wherever your problem is whether in the heavens, whether on earth here whether under the earth God have given us divine victory amen and amen hallelujah thank you very much we'll close on time amen matter the situation in which you are in he is the Lord situations that is beyond your imagination just remember that for
nothing is changing about that child. I want to remember that for them years of age he figured his body was as good as dead for death And so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never what? Wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew what? Stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. Because he had anticipated the resurrection. Continue. He was fully convinced that God is what? God is what? Say able. To do whatever he promises. God is able to do what? Whatever he promises. He promised that he would die, isn't it? He also promised that he would resurrect, isn't it? In the mind of a man, you don't see how a man can die. He will tell himself, I'm dying. I am dead. I will resurrect. None of us can see that. But he predicted his death, even the way he's going to die. And exactly what he said, <coughs> because he has the ability to perform it. So God never promised because he's happy. Some of us, when we are happy, we make promises. You rejoice now. Hey, Pastor, I'll buy you a car. When you're in jail, you promise your girlfriends, your boyfriends, 
your wives, your husbands, your friends. You promise your workers when you're happy. Then when everything settles, you calculate, you do the mathematics. Then you change your mind. God is not like that. Whatever he promises, he holds himself to his promises. And he does. So this is how Abraham knew God. That God, when he makes a promise, he promises he's going to give me and Sarah what? A child. Here am I, 100 years. My body and Sarah's womb, both of them are dead. Buried in the grave. The gynecology buried it. And uh, the doctors buried everything. They say, I this each, you cannot give birth. Last Thursday, I showed a certain young boy. The doctors told the mother she wasn't ovulating. No eggs. So the doctor advised the woman at that time that he should forget and enjoy life. Don't think about a child. And the Lord spoke the Lord has spoken before that you will have a son. And as time went on, it became more difficult for her to have the child. The doctor declared you can never conceive and can never get a child. She'll be calling my wife at that time. And my wife said, have God said it? She said, yes. She said, if God have said it, it's settled. Yeah. The doctor said, and not Ghanaian doctor so. <laughs> this is British doctors. And the day she gave birth, that doctor passed by and saw the child and mother. The boy is now 18 years. What I'm saying, when God promised it, the result looked like, you see, when God said it, it, was, it looked like it would happen. Then it became difficult. It became worse. It looked like it died. And sometimes you want to change your confession, don't change it. God does not look at the, how worse a situation is. He looks at his ability to perform it. In fact, the worse it is, the greater his power will be at work in your life. Abraham, he said he did not waver. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew what? Stronger. See, the more difficult it is, the more stronger your faith should be. If you can do it, you don't need much faith. If you know this one, I can't do it. That's where you need fully to rely on God to help you. So that is what he did. He said, look, where I have got to, I have to rely solely on God. Because it's impossible medically. It's impossible here. He put everything. Now, without God, this thing cannot happen. 
So now God, I hold you to your word. And look at what I just, I just, in fact, he was fully convinced that God is what? Your heart to be what? Fully what? That what? Are you sure God is able? Yes. Are you sure God is able? Yes. That is where you have to. Jesus was fully convinced that if he died, he will rise up. Some of we look at the problems. I don't ever see them. See, yeah, he's going to. Then when it, oh, I'm God. No, 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 no. You need to be fully convinced. So he was fully convinced. He did not look at his body. He did not look at whatever he is. He was fully convinced that God who promised, he also can do it. He has the ability to do it. This God who promised, his promises are what? Yea and amen. It's not yea or maybe. Yea and what? Amen, amen mean what? Yes. When he says yea, it means that in his mind it is done. When God said ye, he said, God, will I get a child? Yes. In the mind of God. He's giving you the child. Sometimes it's just a process of time. What is left is you. There is a giver and there's a receiver. Sometimes it's a receiver that have problems. I used to have some phone. Sometimes it, ref it's, it will refuse to have signals. But around some people's phones will be working. So the problem is not the network. The problem is my phone. So once God has promised, make sure you are tuned to the frequency always and you get every information that comes it will surely be done yeah. so look at why Abraham did them close he was fully convinced that God is what able to do whatever he promises God is not a talkative He doesn't just say things by heart. He is not a politician. After he promised he come to power, he found he doesn't have money to do what he promised. He has all the will. He wants to do it. Nobody comes to power and doesn't want to do anything. But your promise should be linked to your ability to provide funds. But God has the ability to provide the fund and has so when he promises, he knows where he's going to take what to do what. He's not like a man. Then Abraham. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as what? Righteous. Righteous. A place Jesus said, the Bible said, Abraham believed that God can raise the dead before them. His faith was based that even if something is dead, he's a king. He reigned. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to all, to the dead because he is Lord over the grief. 
Dead things are put in graves. Or because he is Lord, when he enters the graves, the dead will come out. He said, I am the resurrection and life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And life, isn't it? So if you want the way, he didn't say, I will show you the way. Most masters, most religion have rules and laws that will show you the way. The Christian religion is not Jesus showing us the way. He is the way. Thank you. He is the one all the religious team, leaders and everybody is pointing to. They want to point to. Why did he? what everybody is doing they want to show you how can I go to heaven where is the way but when you accept Jesus you don't need to ask where is the way you've got the way that is why we need to preach to people to bring them to the way he says I didn't see it he said I am the way. The truth and the life and life. As you go home, I want you to be like Abraham. That God, as it is written, I love it. As it is written, what was written? I have made you what? He quoted a promise. Abraham didn't just become a father, but God first did what? Promise him that I will make you a father of the nation. So based on that, whether God will cut his one leg and make children out of it, he doesn't, he knows that it will happen. He knows that, look, no matter what is happening to my life, God has already said that he's going to make a nation out of me. It is written. It is written about you that by his stripe you were healed. So let the disease try to eat you. Mm. Remember as it is written. Mm. What is written about you? Maybe she will talk about your position in Christ. God does not see you. He sees Christ. But when you bring your request, you bring it through Christ. As it is written. As it is written. As it is written. I have made you what? A father of many nations. In the presence of him. Whom he believed. So Abraham. God has a portion. He does the promise. Abraham have to do what? Huh? Believed. So there are two part of whatever you have. We have the God part. This life. People who mix it, there are two things. Divine. If you put away the divinity, you've lost. You have missed it. Divine intervention and human responsibility. You don't leave everything in God to God. God promised 
so that you can believe. He, fe- he will first do the promise, but we will have to believe what he said. It is only those who believe that will eat the fruit of the lamb. So he believed. God gives, what did he believe? In the present, God who gives life to the world, the dead, and call those things who do not exist as though they did. The way God operates, he doesn't operate like us. Whatever he promised always exists. But they are in the spiritual realm. He promised you a child. The child is already there. It's not that he's going to create it. He's there. Once he promised, it comes in the spiritual realm. Your faith is the one that materializes it. He promised you healing. It's not now that he's going to find the, the, the vaccine. Huh? He's going to do all this defined vaccine for the, uh, 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 the virus or whatever, the uh, uh, bacteria, whatever that is troubling it. The moment God promised is there. What happened is that our faith gets into the spiritual realm and translates what is in the spirit into the physical realm which we can. If you promise that you'll be rich, they have made you rich. Some of you, you dream of a lot of money, but the next day nothing is there. The dream you had, you can't take that dream to the market. You need to turn that dream into the physical then you carry the physical to the market. So you have a portion to play as a child of God. I hope you are getting me. Some say we don't need God. You will struggle and struggle and struggle and walk in darkness. Some say, I have God. God has spoken. Cross your legs. You don't believe. It never happened. He said, God has lied. He hasn't lied. It takes God and man concerning this world, this earth on which we live on. God needs the partnership of man to do whatever he wants to do. Say, God needs me. Say, God needs me. me. Yeah, like God has shown you your wife. You are praying, God, give me. Give me a wife. Give me a wife. Give me a wife. And God show you your man. And the woman to God show you, this man is the husband. And you put you up here. You meet, I know this is my wife, you know, and she too, she knows that's your husband. And you never propose. Then some brother come around and open their mouth. Some brothers they have diarrhea of proposal. <laughs> Any woman they meet, they want to propose. They've proposed to five, ten women in the church. You have little feeling, sister. I'm person more. One day, propose to five in the church. The next week, five in the church. The next week, five in the church. I don't hear Solomon. Then when it comes to then you, you now begin to dodge them. 
Because they know they are in relationship with you. And you think they are harassing you. Harass him. He brought himself. So when God reveals, when God speaks, the question is, what can I do? We have a portion to do. Our portion is when we believe, we obey. You obey the instruction into it, and you have what God has promised. God bless you. We'll take our offering. Ready? Ready for your offering? God has spoken. One of the way to prosper or the way to prosper is obedience. Being obedient to God. Offering time is a very, the most spiritual time of a church. How many of you know that? You don't know. Because it's difficult for you. That's why it's spiritual. It's not only charismatics. But the early church, I always say, the work they do, the priest's main work was offering. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. Burning incense to God. That was the mood. <laughs> now, so we're going to you ask yourself, God, how much do, you, do I have to give? And when God puts something in your heart, don't divide it in your pocket. <laughs> when your purse. Did you hear? Ananias had it. He thought he was smart. So don't go to the devil's side. Don't also let anybody put pressure on you when it's offering time. It's what you have that you give. In fact, the faith in which you give is what is very important. So we are going to take it. Speak. For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Nothing can hold your finances captive. Amen. Not even the economy of Ghana. It will resurrect. It will be what God said it is. God will raise kingdom sponsors. He will take weak people and make them strong. God will lift people who do not matter in this world and make them rich. There will be transfer of wealth into the hands of the righteous. Not for their show, but for the kingdom business. For the days are near and the gospel must run. God will bless you with ideas. Amen. And those ideas will be fruitful. Amen. God will stir up and raise men and women up. And in their hands shall be wealth. In their hands shall be healings. 
in their hands shall be direction. For I will visit my people and I will stir up their faith. My grace shall be mighty upon my people. The grace of God will come upon men and women to do what they have never thought about. And people will ask, is that the people? And they will say, it is the Lord. For some shall rise up and some shall perform wonders. Some shall speak my word and see result. And some shall be a light that will direct people you think they can never change. For the time to show the church off is now. The world will no longer hold you captive. But you will be released and the power of the Lord shall be made known. You will be people no one can keep under control. Because the power of God will not give you peace until you expose God to them. Christ will be made known. His name shall be exalted among you. Let the weak cease. I'm strong. Let the sick say, I am healed. Let the blind say, I can now see. The one who is crippled in life, you shall rise up and run. For my hand shall rest upon my people. Those whose heart are seeking for me, they will find me. Those who are seeking to know me, they will know me. And those who are craving I will appear unto them. Amen. Don't be afraid. I am the Lord your God. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. For my hand shall perform it. My mouth has spoken it. And I will watch over this word until I perform them. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless the offering. Your hand shall be upon you bless your people, increase them, and establish your divine power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Shall we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forever. Amen. God bless you.